Welcome to our Moments of Mission presentation. The session today will highlight Mother Angeline Teresa's vision of caring for the elderly. In order to understand this vision, we need to look at what it means to be an older person, especially one who requires long-term care in a nursing facility. The late, great actress Betty Davis summed it up well when she said, Old age is no place for sissies. She certainly hit the nail on the head. Our residents have suffered many losses, their physical health, their independence. Many are widows or widowers, and some have even lost a child to death over the years. They have probably outlived many of their friends and relatives as well, lessening their social and support circles. In order to enter a nursing home, our residents had to leave behind their home or apartment. Large or small, it did not matter. Home was home, and many of their precious furnishings were disposed of as well. As they enter the facility, they become anxious and bewildered by the many sights and sounds of the home, and by a new set of routines. At the same time, they are looking back, not forward, often reviewing their lives and trying to make peace with all that happened. Mother Angeline understood well the plight of older people. She grew up in Northern Ireland and Scotland, then entered the Little Sisters of the Poor in France. After her religious profession, she was assigned to homes in Brooklyn, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then the Bronx, New York. Over the years, Mother developed a great love of the American people and wished to care for them according to living standards in the United States. When this was not possible within the congregation of the Little Sisters of the Poor, with the guidance and assistance of Patrick Cardinal Hayes of New York, she and six other sisters began the Carmelite Sisters for the Aged and Infirm on September 3, 1929. So what was this all-important vision of caring for which Mother Angeline was willing to leave her former congregation? It included taking care of all classes of the elderly, not only those who had no funds. In her words, My heart went out to these elderly folk of the middle class who asked to pay a little for their own room from savings, private incomes or pension funds, and also the group whose savings had been depleted but who were accustomed to a middle class standard of living. I was even more troubled by the sight of old couples facing the threat of separation except during visiting hours if they accepted the established type of institutional life. I faced the heartbreaking decision of separation from the religious order which I had served for 17 years in order to do it. Mother Angeline stressed the dignity and worth of every old person and the need to love and respect all under our care. For her, that meant seeing Christ in each one and bringing Christ to them as well. In her words, Our apostolate is not only to staff and operate up-to-date homes for the aged. As religious, it is to bring Christ to every old person under our care. Bringing Christ means giving them his compassion, his interest, his loving care, his warmth morning, noon and night. It means inspiring the lay people who work with us to give the same type of loving care. She also remarked, The challenge of providing high quality care is ours. We are the standard bearers against those who would exploit the infirmity of old age for their own profit. How timely is that last quote in this day and age? How do we bring the compassion of Christ to our residents? To quote Mother, it involves, being concerned when an old person is sick and confused. It means bidding an old person the time of day and saying a few kind words to them when we meet them. In short, doing all those little thoughtful things you would want someone to do for your own mother or father. Sometimes we can be so busy accomplishing tasks for our residents that we fail to remember that they are people just like us needing our warmth and affirmation. Mother continues, Old age is a lonely period. 
At no time in a person's life is kindness so much needed and appreciated. Efficiency is wonderful, but it should never replace kindness. All professional skill should stem from the kindness and compassion of Christ. She recognized how difficult coming to a nursing home could be. In her words, I often think of the sacrifices our old people must make, and yet we sometimes feel our life is so difficult. They must leave their homes, familiar surroundings, friends and relatives, and adjust to our homes. Unless we use all our love and skill to make the last year's golden years, our old people can spend many lonely hours and years before God calls them to their eternal reward. To combat this, she encouraged the loving care that sees what the residents are going through and plans little parties and surprises to break the monotony. Mother Angeline also notes, where once the dire need of the elderly person was only to find a haven wherein to spend his last days in at least some degree of comfort. Today, our aging seek opportunities to expand their horizon of living. We now have the challenge to put yet more life into those last years, making living more meaningful and satisfying. How can we help our residents live fulfilled lives in their later years? Their happiness involves more than planning programs. It requires a special attitude of heart. This important element is, in her words, a spirit of optimism which permeates every facet of its operation. More than any other factor, it is this stimulating force which motivates each resident and instills renewed hope and confidence. No matter the difficulties in providing care in this day and age, we have to believe in our residents' dignity and worth, and their ability to make progress in reaching their highest potential. We also have to feel that what we are doing makes a difference in their lives, and indeed in our own. Mother reminds us, There is no such thing in life as standing still. We either go backward or progress forward. If we do not aim high, we shall never accomplish anything worthwhile. We want our homes to be not better, but the best. Mother Angeline encouraged her sisters to meet the needs of the times. In order to do that, many Carmelite homes, in addition to providing services to long-term residents, now care for residents who only stay a few weeks for rehabilitation. They also provide special units for residents with dementia and for those on hospice. Some facilities also offer independent living, assisted living, and daycare programs. As Mother's assistant, Mother Bernadette de Lourdes noted, it was Mother Angeline and her companions' earnest hope and desire to meet a very evident need of our increasingly complex culture. In addition to providing physical and social support and shelter, for those aging who need specialized care and companionship. Their aim was also to make available to the growing number of persons over 65 a more personal and advanced type of care, where elderly people from all walks of life, without distinction as to race, color, or creed, might continue to live normal lives in a home-like atmosphere. Mother Angeline was once asked in an interview, what needs did you see required to be fulfilled? Her answer was this. Greater independence and freedom for older persons, more home-like care, private rooms, providing for married couples, and caring for those who were economically disadvantaged, as well as for those who had some financial resources. Mother also made sure that a beautiful and reverent chapel was the center and heart of each home. Several years ago, some of the sisters who ministered with Mother in the early days were asked to share their reflections. One noted, Mother herself was frequently in one of the residents' dining rooms, where we observed her careful attention to their wants and needs. I have never seen Mother impatient with them, but I have seen the confidence they displayed that they would be heard and helped. 
Another sister mentions, Privacy was an aspect of life for the residents of the home for which she had a deep regard. When mother planned the three additional floors to St. Patrick's, she insisted on all private rooms, large rooms with large closets. In the 1930s, this was unheard of in homes for the aged, where traditionally the older people were grouped together in large multi-bed dormitories. And in addition, respect for the dignity of each resident was ever a priority. This was expressed in many ways. If an old man prayed blessings on her and the sisters in a stage whisper during our morning meditation, he must be allowed to do so, and the distraction could be made into a prayer. Before activities and therapies were ever heard of, the residents were invited by mother on special occasions to join the sisters for a party, and they were encouraged to participate. So how do we sum up her vision? The basic philosophy of Mother Angeline Teresa consists in first acknowledging the sanctity of life and the dignity and worth of each person under our care. This moves us to take the time to acknowledge each resident and treat each with loving kindness and compassion. It means understanding the loneliness of old age and the loss involved in entering a nursing facility and trying to make the latter years more fulfilling. The primary ideal of any of the Carmelite homes was, and still is, to provide a safe and home-like environment for older persons with quality care for the individual, endeavoring to meet the physical, psychological, social, and spiritual needs of each, and helping them reach their full potential. To provide total or holistic care on a 24-hour basis, many different health care and other professional disciplines are needed. Each department is a piece of the puzzle of long-term care, and a well-run facility needs the ongoing and dedicated efforts of all in the mutual respect of shared commitment. Finally, as a resident's condition begins to deteriorate, sisters and staff provide comfort and support to the residents and their loved ones in programs of palliative care and hospice. These ideals of Mother Angeline are both simple and profound. They do not require a high level of knowledge and skill, only a heart full of love and compassion that is willing to use our gifts and talents in the service of others. May we continue to keep Mother Angeline's vision alive in our daily care of the residents in this place they call home.